This is an update for the progress of the Neuralink team. It's been an incredible amount of progress. What we're doing with Neuralink is dramatically increasing the bandwidth by many orders of magnitude. A human bandwidth output is less than one bit per second over the course of a day. So there's 86,400 seconds in a day. What we're talking about here is, is going from maybe one bit per second to ultimately megabits and then gigabits per second. And the ability to do conceptual, consensual telepathy. The input to the brain is much higher, because of, especially because of vision. Depending upon how you count it, it, it might be on the order of a megabit or in the megabit range for input primarily due to sight. But e even for input, we think that can be dramatically increased to, to the gigabit plus level. Your ability to communicate is very limited by how fast you can talk and how fast you can type. And what we're talking about is unlocking that potential to enable you to communicate thousands, perhaps millions of times faster than is currently possible. This would be a fundamental change to what it means to be a human. We're starting off with reducing human suffering, addressing issues that people have, say if they've been in an accident or they have some neural disease that's degenerative, so they're losing a capability to move their body or some kind of injury, essentially. Our first product is called telepathy, and that enables someone who has lost the ability to command their body to be able to communicate with a computer and move the mouse and, and actually operate a computer with roughly the same dexterity, ultimately much more dexterity than a, than a human with uh, working hands. Our next product is Blindsight, which will enable those who have l total loss of vision, including if they've lost their eyes or the optic nerve, or maybe have never seen, were bl even blind from birth, to be able to see again. We'll understand vastly more about the nature of consciousness as a result of this. And then ultimately, I think this helps mitigate the civilizational risk of artificial intelligence. So to date, we have four spinal cord injury participants as well as three ALS participants with the last two surgeries happening within one week of each other. Our end goal is to really build a whole brain interface. And what do we mean by whole brain interface? We mean being able to listen to neurons everywhere, be able to write information to neurons anywhere, be able to have that fast data wireless transfer to enable that high bandwidth connection from our biological brain to the external uh, machines, and be able to do all of this with fully automated surgery, as well as uh, enable 24 hours of usage. So now, just to step you through what the product evolution is gonna look like in the next three years, uh, today, what we have is 1,000 electrodes in the motor cortex, the part of the small part of the brain that you see in this animation called the hand knob area, uh, that allows participants to control computer cursors as well as gaming consoles. Next quarter, we're planning to implant in the speech cortex to directly decode attentive words from brain signals to speech. And in 2026, not only are we going to triple the number of electrodes, from 1,000 to 3,000 for more capabilities. We're planning to have our first blindsight participant to enable navigation. And in 2027, we're going to continue increasing channel counts, probably another triple, so 10,000 channels, and also enable, for the first time, multiple implants. So not just one in motor cortex, speech cortex, or visual cortex, but all of the above. And finally, in 2028, our goal is to get to more than 25,000 channels per implant have multiple of these, have ability to access any part of the brain for psychiatric conditions, pain, dysregulation, and also start to demonstrate what it would be like to actually integrate with AI. And all this is to say that we're really building towards a set of fundamental foundational technology that would allow us to have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of channels with multiple implants for whole brain interfaces that could actually solve not just these debilitating neurological conditions, but be able to go beyond the the limits of our biology. And now that we have a bit of a sense of what the BCI can do, a very important question to answer is, how does this impact the day-to-day -day lives of the people that use it every day? I'm about to show you a clip going back to Nolan for a second. We simply just asked him randomly during a day how he enjoys using the BCI a couple months ago. And this is his candid reaction. I work basically all day from when I um, wake up, uh, trying to wake up at like six or 7 a.m and I'll do work until session, I'll do session, and then I'll work until 11, 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. Wow. I'm learning my languages, I'm learning my math, I'm like relearning all of my math. Mm. I am 
writing. I am doing the, a class that I signed up for. This is not something I would be able to do like without the neural. And another thing that could be done also is like for people that have say lost an arm or a leg or something like that, then we think in the future we'll be able to attach an Optimus arm or legs. I don't remember that scene from Star Wars where Luke Skywalker gets his hand chopped off with a lightsaber and he gets kind of a robot hand. I think that's the kind of thing that we'll be able to do in the future uh, working with uh, Neuralink and Tesla. Another thing that will be possible, I, um, I think is very likely in the future, is to be able to bridge the uh, where the damaged neurons are. So you can take the signal from the brain and transmit that signal past where the neurons are damaged or strained to the rest of the body so you could reanimate the body so that if you have a neural link implant in the brain and then one in the spinal cord, you can actually bridge the signals and you could walk again. I'd say fairly confident that at some point in the future, we'll be able to restore full body functionality. It's really interesting that if we can decode someone's intention to speak silently and non-vocal communication, we can use that to revolutionize the way we interact with computers, with technology, and with information. Instead of typing with your finger or like moving the mouse or talking to your phone, you'll be able to interact with computer with the speed of thought. It will make this interaction much, more, much faster and much more intuitive. The computers will understand what you want to do. And we can also expand that to AI. We can now build an interface with AI that you will be able to retrieve information, will be able to store our thoughts anywhere, anytime, privately and silently. Right here to my left is actual footage of Alex, one of our participants, playing a first-person shooter against RJ, another one of our participants. It requires two fully independent joysticks or four continuous degrees of control, as well as multiple reliable buttons. Now, contrary to popular belief, the Neuralink does not simply read people's minds. It's simply reading neuronal activations corresponding to motor intent. So one of the fun challenges with this project was figuring out which motions were gonna be mapped to the joystick. We started with the typical left thumb and right thumb, but quickly found that the dominant hand overshadowed the non-dominant hand. My personal favorite is we had one of our participants imagine walking for the left joystick and aiming for the right joystick. So in game, they were simply doing naturalistic moves, uh, motions, like you might do in virtual reality in Ready Player One. I wanna talk a bit about the progress to our cursor calibration experience. To my left here, you can see RJ completing his first ever cursor calibration with a redesigned open loop flow where he first gather information about his intent and how to map the neural activity to the first time he controls a cursor to the final product where he has smooth and fluid control of his computer. And most remarkably, this experience took only 15 minutes from start to finish. 15 minutes from no control to fluid computer use. Blind sight is our project to build a visual prosthesis to help the blind see again. Users would wear a pair of glasses with an embedded camera and receive an implant in their visual cortex. Scenes from the environment are recorded by the camera and processed into patterns of stimulation delivered to the brain, causing visual perception and restoring functionality. Now, blind sight will be enabled by placing our implant into visual cortex. We can achieve these capabilities because we are vertically integrated and we designed this custom ASIC in-house. Now, how can we calibrate our implant for blind sight? So here's one way. We stimulate on the array, picking, say, three different channels. The user perceives something, say, three spots of light, somewhere in their visual field, and points at them. We track their arm and eye movements and repeat this process for each of the channels on the array. And here's what a simulated example of a blind sight vision could look like after calibration. The way humans communicate today, if they wanna output information, is by using their hands and their voice, as I'm doing right now. And if you wanna receive information, you use your ears and your eyes. And of course, that's how you're receiving this very talk. But we've built this implant, and this implant is very special because it is the first time that we're able to add a completely new mode of data transfer into and out of the brain. If you look at this device in a nutshell, it's really just sampling voltages in the brain and sending them over radio. But if you zoom out and look at the system from end to end, what you actually see is that we're connecting your brain or a biological neural net, a machine learning model or a silicon neural net on the right hand side. I actually think this is really elegant because the machine learning model on the right-hand side is in fact inspired by neurons on the left-hand side. And so in some sense, we're really extending the fundamental substrate of the brain. For the first time, we're able to do this in a mass market product. That's a very, very special piece of hardware. Just to close out and to recap, 
today, Neuralink is working reliably and has already changed the lives of seven participants and making a real impact. And our next milestone is to go to market and enable scaling of this technology to thousands of people, and as well as expand functionalities beyond just the movement to enable sophisticated robotic arm control, speech, vision, give sight back, and even getting to the speed of thought. We're trying to give you a sense of the depth of talent at Neuralink. There's a lot of really smart people working on a lot of important problems. This is one of the most difficult things to actually succeed in creating and have it work and work at scale and be reliable and available for millions of people at an affordable price.